Hello and welcome back to Workbench Wednesdays. My name is James and in this video we talk about a cleaning agent called the Oxid. I have used this stuff for years to clean old electronics and maintain current gear. For example, years ago I had an Apple IIc monitor that had a funky but stable pattern. First, I tried replacing all of the electrolytic capacitors. Then, I sourced new old stock versions of the two amplifier ICs on its control board. But it was not until I sprayed this potentiometer with deoxit that the monitor started working again. And it looked great, even when it was upside down. As it turns out, there are a bunch of different types of deoxit, and I was never sure which I should be using. So, I reached out to Keg Laboratories, and they sent me a care package with various formulations. In this video, I explain what it is and which to pick. Then I show how to use it, and at the end, I did a little test. For the purpose of this video, I am focused on smaller electronics. I mention this because Cake has products for a wide range of applications and extreme environments like aircraft. And for whatever reason, the Element 14 community would not let me expense an airplane to test this on. So with that, let's go deoxidize. Unlike a traditional cleaning agent, deoxit leaves behind a thin film. The spray contains the active ingredient deoxit, a carrier solvent, and a propellant. The carrier solvent spreads the deoxit, and the propellant, well, propels it out of the bottle. The makeup of the actual compound is a trade secret, or you could look at the back of the can. In general, deoxit breaks up oxidation, flushes it away, and then bonds with the metal surface, protecting it from future oxidation. In contrast, contact cleaners only remove surface level contaminants and offer no future protection. My experience has been, use this stuff once and see it working, and then you're sold. Now, what really confused me is that with all of these variations that all say deoxic on them, I had no idea which I should be using or when. So, let's talk about that next. There are four main series to consider. The deoxic, gold, fader, and shield series. D-Series is my go-to cleaner. Its mixture dissolves oxidation, flushes it away, slightly lubricates, and protects the clean surface. The G-Series is good for gold-plated surfaces like edge connectors, which normally have minimal oxidation. The F-Series is designed specifically to lubricate conductive plastic and carbon compound slide faders, like those found in audio and video mixing boards. For rotary potentiometers, use the D-Series. Then there is also the S series, which is for protecting clean or brand new metal surfaces. Now, neither the S or F series provide the same cleaning action like the D or G series. So for most electronics rework, repair, or maintenance, you probably want D series, G series, or a combination of those two. But the selection fund does not stop there. Let's focus on the D series for a minute. These three bottles all contain deoxic, but why are they numbered D5, DN5, and D100L? Well, there are a couple of reasons. First is the difference between the spray and liquid bottle. Guess what the L in D100L stands for? The D5 aerosol can contains 5% deoxic, 75% carrier solvent, and 20% propellant. 75 and 20 is 95 and 5, yep, that's 100. The D5 and DN5 are slightly different. The N indicates the propellant is a non-flammable type and the solution dries quickly. However, it does not have the same flushing action as plain D5. Also, I noticed on these in-series bottles, which were smaller, they have an adjustable nozzle. They output a low, medium, and high amount of spray. When I was using the larger D5 bottle, I flooded a dip socket with deoxic. Too much, in fact. While the low setting on the DN5 bottle was much more manageable. Still a bit much, but less to clean up. Also, everyone I know that has used deoxid has experienced the always drip from the pivot point <clears throat> feature of the large can. The smaller ones do not do that, nor does the liquid type. The D100L bottle is pure deoxic. It does not contain a carrier solvent or obviously propellant. It's the same stuff that makes up 5% of the D5 cans. Oh, and don't forget to put the cap back on the bottle when you're done using it. D5 means 5% concentration and D100 means 100% concentration. Now, you can take most of what I just said and apply it to the G series. It has the same variations based on a different formulation called G100. One difference is that G100 has less cleaning action than D100. I will link this in the show notes. So basically, from left to right, you have better cleaning, and from right to left, you have better protection. 
As I said, D5 has been my go-to cleaner, but moving forward, I'm probably going to switch to DN5. And then when I work with edge connectors, I'll start using G100L. So let's go talk about how to use these next. In general, applying the oxid is straightforward. Unpower the device, spray a small amount on the conductor, connect it, and then lightly spray again. For me, this method works well as a maintenance step. It has fixed crackling audio and fuzzy video on RCA jacks. A unique property of deoxit is that it will migrate to other metal surfaces. So this method also works well for connectors where you cannot easily reach both sides. Direct application is better, but indirect is still a good option. The one mistake I had been making for a long time, and even when I started shooting this video, is that I apply too much. One reason is that the 142 gram can sprays way too much for most small scale electronics applications. Now, once the solvent and the propellant dry, the remaining material won't cause short circuits, but it is wasteful. So it is better to apply small amounts in short bursts. And when using any of the 100% concentration types, you should wipe off the excess amounts if you can. Now, cleaning up that VIC-20 got me wondering, how would cleaning with deoxic compare to just using isopropyl alcohol? So I grabbed a game cartridge for some side-by-side -side comparisons. After removing its PCB, I used masking tape to prevent cross-contamination on half of the connector. Then I rubbed half of the connector with IPA and a clean room wipe. Next, I rubbed the other half with a different cloth and deoxic DN5. And here is the comparison. Deoxit on the left and IPA on the right. And even if you think the difference is just from the lighting, look at the two cloths. It is clear there is more residue on the one with deoxit. Now, is that a definitive test? I don't know. But I tried the same comparison a few times and it always cleaned more stuff off than IPA. Oh, and when cleaning cartridges, I suggest removing the PCB from the case. While deoxit is safe on plastic, if there is overspray, you could damage the label. Fortunately, but sadly, that cartridge was already dead, so no major loss. I was hoping corrosion was the problem, but it turns out that the ROM chip is bad. So I had an idea on how to test deoxit. I connected five volts to two 10 kilo ohm potentiometers and then a one kilo ohm resistor from the wiper to ground. Using an oscilloscope, I measured the voltage at the wiper as I twisted the knob. After a couple of practices, I got a fairly repeatable waveform from the left and right potentiometer that I saved as references for both. Then I placed each into a cup of tap water and let them sit for 24 hours. The next day, I put them in my super advanced reflow oven and baked them for 60 minutes at about 90 degrees Celsius. My intent was to force the water to oxidize the potentiometer's contacts. After that bake out, they sat around for another 24 hours. I used the same breadboard as the day before so I could repeat the wipe experiment on the scope. Here's the result. On the first twist, you can see a bunch of noise around this area. After a couple more, it still looked like this. So we have successfully damaged this potentiometer. So let's see if the right one does the same thing. Yep, just as noisy. Now this could just be how I'm actuating the knob, but I never saw anything like that on the previous sweeps. And they're both doing the same thing. Next, I sprayed a quick spurt of DN5 where I thought it would enter the pot and twisted the actuator a few times. And now the waveform looks very similar to the reference before. So is this a definitive test? I don't know, but I found it really interesting that there was such a good result on the first try. While deoxit is safe on modern plastics and I have never had any issues myself, Keg does, of course, suggest testing an area to see if it discolors after a couple of days, especially on plastics that are 30 years or older. That said, you should not use deoxit or anything else for that matter on motor windings or windings with varnish as the insulation layer. So be careful around transformers. Believe it or not, but we only scratch the surface of this stuff. There are several more variations and applicator styles that I did not cover. And I'm sure that there are other tests that we could try. If you have an idea, let me know over on the Element 14 community. There is a link below where you can submit your ideas, get product information, and links to information from Keg. As always, thank you for watching. For now, it is time for me to get back to breaking up, flushing away, and protecting from oxidation with D5N followed by G100L on my electronics workbench.